Many wear workaholism as a badge of honor. And by many, I'm talking about high performers, business owners, CEOs, things of that nature. And I did too, until this moment back 20 years ago, 2002, around March, because I know because my son was born February 22nd, 2002. So around March, maybe April of 2002, I'm having a sit down discussion with a former business partner of Tony Robbins. Uh, the gentleman's name is Ricky Rainbolt, and I'm sitting with Ricky explaining to him how as the publisher of the North Carolina Home Book, which I was at that moment, for anyone looking to build, remodel, or decorate their million dollar plus home in Charlotte, Greensboro, or Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, I was explaining to him in a braggadocious manner of how hard I was working and the results that I was attaining along with my team. And I was doing so because I was wearing my workaholism as a badge of honor. How early I was getting into the office, how late I was staying at the office. And at that time, I was leaving the, the, my home at the time before 7 a.m. and generally not leaving the office until after 9 p.m. at that particular moment in my life. And recall, I just had had a baby and I had been recently married as well. So I'm sitting there bragging about how hard I was working and the results I was getting. And Ricky hit me with something that A, I wasn't expecting, and B, little did I know would change the trajectory of the upcoming 20 years. And Ricky sat back and he said, you know, Tom, I can tell you're saying this in a manner where you want me to pat you on the back and congratulate you on how hard you're working. But the reality is it makes me super sad uh, in two ways. One, if you're working that hard and not achieving results, something's really wrong. Like you're working way too hard to not be achieving results. If, if you're putting in that amount of hours, time, energy, and effort, and not getting good results, obviously there's something broken in that process. So that's not impressive in that regard. And then the other regard is this. Didn't you just have a new baby? Aren't you newly married? How much time are you spending with your new wife, your new baby? And that statement, talk about breaking a paradigm. Talk about words just getting right to my heart at that moment. I think, I recall teardrops forming in my eyes at that particular moment. And for many years afterwards, when I would tell this story, it was hard to fight back the tears as well. Because the reality was no, I wasn't putting time and energy into anything else other than the business because of the amount of workaholism that I was bragging about. And so he said this, and this changed my perspective about working hard versus working smart. He said this, Tom, if you want to impress me, get the same results in half the amount of time. He said, but even then you're working so much that still wouldn't be super impressive. So do it once and then do it again. So if you're open to this challenge, what would you have to do? What would you have to start doing? Do more of, do less of, and stop doing to get the same results in half the amount of time. And once you do that, do it again. So that began my high performing career. And, and by the way, I'd been a national bicycle champion. I'd been the number one honor man out of boot camp. I'd been meritoriously promoted three times in four years in the United States Marine Corps. I'd been number one in five sales organizations. And that work ethic is what led me to be the top in all those areas. And so when he hit me with that, it went right through my heart and I said, wow. And versus fighting it, I accepted that challenge. I said, you know what? I'll accept that challenge and I will see what if it's possible for me to get the same results in half the amount of time. And I began that journey. What would I have to start doing, do more of, do less of, and stop doing to get the same results in half the amount of my time? And those are some things that I'll be discussing in some upcoming uh, conversations. But that's what I've not only mastered for myself, but helped many of my clients do. Get the same results in half the amount of their time. In essence, doing that a couple times, you get so good at it that you're, you have the clarity. And that's really, if we're going to narrow it down to one word, it's the clarity on what is mine to do. And when you have that clarity of what's mine to do, it also gives you the clarity of what's not yours to do. And if we break that down just using the Pareto Principle, something you can, you can grasp real quickly, 20% of our activities produce 80% of our results. 80% of our activities produce 20% of our results. Let that sink in for a little bit. So when you recognize that 
the 20% of activities produce 80% of my results. When you're asking yourself that question, what's mine to do, you go to that 20% that's going to produce the 80% of results. You, you also are very clear that when you're, you find yourself breaking out of the hypnotic state of doing the 80% of activities that are only giving you the 20% of results, you call that time out, whoa, this isn't what's mine to do. And you readjust and get clear on what is yours to do, and you do that. And you continually uh, repeat that process. What's mine to do now? Boom, that's done. Okay, now what's mine to do? Now what's mine to do? And oh, by the way, when I was in workaholic mode all those years ago, and, and, I, and there's been times when it's a flux. Sometimes in workaholic mode, sometimes I'm super system you know, and, and process oriented. It's, it's a never set and forget type of thing. It's a continual refinement. But um, when I'm clear on that, it gives me um, uh, uh, that, that clarity necessary to know what the answer is to what's mine to do right here, right now. Uh, we'll get into some other deeper uh, techniques and strategies as we dive into this, but I wanted to share this with you and, and pose the question, what if it was possible for you to achieve the same results in half the amount of your time? Because the reality is, if you think it's possible, it, yeah, that's a possibility. There is a chance that you could uh, sit down and put some strategy into it, gain some clarity, put the, put the program in place, and achieve that. But if you think it's not possible for you, guess what? You're right. Because that quote rings true in this. Wh whatever we think, you know, to be uh, uh, true or untrue for us, that's going to be the definition of it. So um, if you believe it to be possible, you don't have to know how, but if I believe that could be possible for me, you are uh, way ahead of the game in making it uh, possible. Then if you say, no, not possible, there's no way... I could get the same results in half the amount of time. Well, you have become the seer of your future in that regard, and you will not find the answer to it until you can bridge the gap of what if. What if it is possible for you to achieve the same results in half the amount of your time? And now I help people double their results in half of their time. So anyhow, something to ponder. We'll be talking about that more in depth as we continue these conversations. Hit me up with your comments, with your feedback below of some times that have given you a shattering of your beliefs, uh, your paradigm immediately changed when uh, someone shared some information. Maybe this is one of those times. That's my hope. But stick with me. There's going to be more to come. I look forward to chatting with you soon. Until next time, make today great. Bye for now.